I committed far more murders than I was charged with, says a small scraggy man in the robe of a life-sentenced prisoner. Innocent people are incarcerated for my crimes. His arms are like stumps, most of the fingers are missing. With these hands he did horrendous things. He was named as the Traveler Maniac after he left a trail of blood in ten regions of Russia. Sergei Martinov had other different nicknames, such as Butcher, Orderly, Cleaner, Varonish Chikatila, Bashkir Beast, Reaper. In 2007, two similar crimes took place in Udmurtia and the Aryol region with a time difference of several months. Someone cruelly killed two women by inflicting multiple stab wounds on them. Investigators later found out that in the first case, the victim of an unknown man was a woman, Svetlana Starikova, that lived in the city of Glazov. The neighbors said that recently the two women was living together with a man whose name was Sergei. According to the neighbors, he worked at a construction site and in general made a good impression. He was neatly dressed and politely communicated with everyone. But he had a physical disability. The upper phalanges were missing on two fingers of his right hand. After Svetlana disappeared, Sergei was also nowhere to be seen. In the Aryol region, in the village of Znaminka, a similar crime happened a few months later. In the summer of 2008, an unknown woman's body was found on a field. It turns out that the dead woman, not long ago before her death, sheltered a man in her house. He had nowhere to live, that's why he decided to beg the woman to let him in. By a strange coincidence, his name was also Sergei, and he also didn't have two phalanges on his fingers. The people who knew the woman later told the investigators that her new friend told everyone that he worked as an electrician in Perm and almost lost his right arm due to an injury. Sergei was planning on leaving the village and going to Kirov to work there. Therefore, when he suddenly disappeared, nobody paid any attention to it. However, the coincidences weren't accidental. Both women were killed by the same person. The killer turned out to be previously convicted Sergei Martinov. He was imprisoned for torture and murder. It wasn't difficult for the detectives to determine his identity from the numerous fingerprints left at the crime scenes. Martinov's problem with the law began in his young ages. During his service in the army, he went on the run, but the deserter was caught and imprisoned for seven years. Martinov served his term in Kazakhstan. In 1989, he was released early and two years later, in Kakhasia, he broke into someone's house and was determined to steal all the valuable items. Unexpectedly and extremely at the wrong time, the hostess returned back home. In order not to leave any witnesses alive, Martinov attacked her, abused her, and in the end killed her. Martinov was quickly arrested because he left fingerprints everywhere. The court sentenced the killer to 15 years in prison but he was released for good behavior three years earlier in 2004. Without any reason, in 2005, Sergei Martinov attacked a 14-year-old schoolgirl, says Alexander Shmakov, who investigated all of Martinov's subsequent crimes. He slashed the girl in the face using a razor. He was quickly caught, but strangely, Martinov somehow managed to escape from the police department. From that moment until his arrest in the fall of 2010, he was on the federal wanted list. The detectives say that Martinov easily gained confidence in people. Not only was he a good psychologist, but he also had an unsuspicious appearance. During conversations with women, Sergei told a similar story that he is wandering around the country alone, has no wife, no relatives either, and seeks for any job opportunities. The women sympathized with him. Sometimes the maniac met someone on the street, and on the same day he sent the person to the afterlife. The fact that Sergei Martinov skillfully gained trust from people is also proven by another fact. In 2007, in the village Vyazovka, Kstov district in Nizhegorod region, Martinov and his friend were building a house. Once, the owner left his eight-year-old daughter at the country house and promised to pick her up later. Apparently, the men trusted his workers. The maniac waited a bit and offered the girl to take her to her father by bus. They walked into the bus together and exited it near the forest. In the forest, Martinov tortured the girl and then disappeared. 
All of his victims are women, and only once in Vladimir, in May 2008, he dealt with a man. Martinov worked with him together on a construction site in a church. The colleague started to teach him how to live correctly, for which he eventually paid the price. The maniac was tired of listening to his lecture and stabbed the builder. Before escaping from the crime scene, Sergei stole money. The maniac committed another murder in March in the Sverlovsk region. He met a woman and went out with her several times. On their last date, Martinov killed her using a knife. Then, in the same year, in June, the attacker murdered another woman that lived in the Uglich district of the Yaroslav region. Sometime after they met, he notified her that he was leaving for another city. The woman begged him to stay with her. Their relationship ended in a tragic way. Martinov killed the woman near the forest. The following three crimes the maniac committed almost in identical circumstances. In the beginning of 2010, while traveling the country, he stayed in the Lipetsk region. There he dealt with a woman that didn't have a permanent place of residence. He started drinking with her near the highway, and after a small disagreement, he got angry, tied her to a pole, grabbed a scrap metal, and killed her with several severe hits. In the summer of 2010, the maniac settled in Ufa. By that time, the police were actively searching for him. His photographs, signs, and a request to everyone who came across him to call the police were published in the media. Martinov wandered and wasn't living rich. Sometimes he even came to get free lunches at churches. In one of the churches he visited, he met a 70-year-old grandmother. He told her the story about how he is wandering around the country and leaves on the streets for a long time. The old lady felt sorry for him and, without a second thought, offered to spend the night at her place. The next day, the detectives that were called by local residents saw a terrible scene at the grandmother's apartment. The body was wounded and laid in the middle of the room. There were traces of dinner on the kitchen table, food, tea, and an unfinished bottle of vodka. All of the men's clothes disappeared from the closet. But what struck the investigators the most was a note that was addressed to them. The author promised that there won't be any more dead bodies in the near future. Martinov's victims were women over 40 years old who were prone to drinking alcohol, says the investigator Alexander Shmakov. During the interrogations, the killer admitted that he felt hatred from them and helped them to get rid of the burden and quickly leave the worthless life. Sergei specifically chose victims who drank alcohol and committed the murder after the victims were under the influence of alcohol. A heavily drunk woman is weak and is unable to fight back Martinov. The searchers got really lucky in the autumn of 2010. Right before leaving Ufa, Sergei took the prisoner's mobile phone with him. Suddenly, at the beginning of November, the investigators found out that the phone was turned on and working in the Voronezh region. The signal came from the Novosmansky district. Bashkir detectives contacted their Voronezh colleagues and sent operatives to the capital of Chernozyom to arrest Sergei. Martinov was arrested during the night on November 19th. The last two months he lived and worked at the roadside café Jambul. He did different tasks at the café and also worked as an electrician. When the operative workers and investigators burst into his room, he was asleep and didn't understand what was happening at first. It may have saved one of their lives. A knife and a razor blades were found in the criminal's pocket. Martinov was immediately sent to the Bashkir pre-trial detention center in order to classify all the circumstances. At first, the territorial department of the investigative committee dealt with his crimes, but after, the case was transferred to the investigative committee of Russia due to the fact that the murders took place all over Russia and not only the specific region. The maniac included a pre-trial agreement with the detectives, meaning talked about all of his bloody actions in full detail. Due to the frequent moves from place to place, Sergei mixed up the names of cities and towns. Therefore, it cannot be excluded that there were more killings than the detectives know about. As a result of his confessions, it became clear that some women that were counted as missing were actually dead. This, for example, happened to a woman in the Yaroslavl region who decided to offer shelter to Martinov. The psychological and physiatric examination 
counted Martinov sane. The experts also reported that Martinov possesses such qualities as demonstrativeness, egocentrism, irascibility, and increased attention to himself, said the state prosecutor Vitaly Sidorov. This man really likes himself and isn't prone to feel sorry for others. During the court sessions, video conferences were used to take testimony from witnesses and relatives of those who were killed. This saved time by not transporting the participants from many cities to Voronezh. No one filled a civil claim for moral damages against Martinov in court. At the time of arrest, we knew about five murders in which Sergei Martinov was involved. Ildar Minyakmetov, an investigator of the investigative department for the Leninsky district of Ufa, told KP. Right now, I identified five more murders to which the killer is most likely also involved. As a result, the maniac took the life of 10 people. Among them was only one male. All the others were defenseless women. There are strong suspicions that Martinov also committed robberies and raped minors. Hence, it is possible that this list will be continued. During the investigation, Sergei Martinov said that he isn't going to tell everything all at once. Perhaps he wants to stretch the pleasure. But at least for now, his confessions are sincere. When Martinov was arrested, he declared that it would be easier just to kill him because he's tired from wandering around the country. If you kill me, it would be easier for both sides, for me and for you, said the maniac with a bitter smile. But the investigators believe that this is nothing but a trick. By looking at him, you can see that he wants to leave and he even hopes to be released and become free again, says investigator Ildar Minyakmetov. On November 2, 2012, the Voronezh Regional Court sentenced Sergei Martinov to a life imprisonment sentence. He is serving his sentence in the White Swan colony.